Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Schlocker. Today, I will be giving you an introduction to tracheostomy. A tracheostomy provides airway access through the neck. There are several different reasons a patient may need a tracheostomy. These reasons include requiring a ventilator to breathe, upper airway obstruction from a tumor, or severe sleep apnea. Learning that a tracheostomy, or a trach, may be necessary can be overwhelming. We hope that this video series will help you feel a bit more comfortable by understanding what a trach is and what care it requires. We will start by talking about why people need a trach and exactly what it is. Next, we will describe the surgical procedure. And finally, we will discuss the basics of caring for a tracheostomy. So first, let's go over what a tracheostomy is. A tracheostomy is both the procedure where the tube is placed through the windpipe to establish an airway, and it's the name given to the tube itself. There are many reasons why someone may require a breathing machine or ventilator. Others may have upper airway obstructions from vocal cord injury or tumors. Still others may have brain damage that requires a trach for safer breathing or secretion clearance. Often, this is first managed with an endotracheal tube through the patient's mouth or nose. If a ventilator is needed for a long time, a tracheostomy allows for a patient to speak, eat, and drink while still using the ventilator. Some patients need a trach due to the narrowing or obstruction of their airway. There are many possible causes of an obstruction, but the purpose of the trach is the same, to bypass that blockage and make an open airway that allows air to pass into and out of the lungs. Some people are at risk for pneumonia because they cannot prevent saliva from getting into their lungs. For these patients, the purpose of a tracheostomy is to allow caregivers to suction the lungs clear of those secretions. The trach doesn't prevent saliva from going down into the lungs, but the ability to suction the lungs through the trach reduces the risk of pneumonia for these patients. Many patients may only need their trach for weeks to months, while others may need the trach for the rest of their lives. Every person is different, and you must talk about the plan for trach removal, or decannulation, with your care team. The decannulation process begins if the patient no longer needs the tube to help with breathing, ventilation, or saliva clearance. The original tube is changed to a smaller, cuffless tube and capped. This is a trial period where the patient will be breathing through their mouth and nose without the help of the tube. If the patient can tolerate the cap trach for a period of time designated by the care team, the tube can be removed. Tracheostomies are often done in the operating room while the patient is fully asleep with general anesthesia. If a breathing tube is already in place, this will stay in the airway until the procedure is complete. Tracheostomies are sometimes done in the ICU when a patient is intubated and the ICU can provide anesthesia. This is called a percutaneous tracheostomy or a perc trach. The surgical ICU and anesthesia teams work together to provide excellent care and to minimize any discomfort during transport and the procedure. Once the patient is under anesthesia, the skin will be cleaned. The doctor will make an incision into the skin on the neck and into the windpipe. The tracheostomy tube is then placed through the incision. The trach tube is held in place with sutures and a tie that goes around the neck. The tracheotomy procedure takes between 30 and 60 minutes. After the tracheotomy, the patient will be kept in the ICU with good pain control for several days to allow the site to heal. The ICU is the safest place to be after the procedure for close monitoring. Often, there are sutures in place to keep the trach from accidentally coming out. The sutures are typically removed five to seven days after the trach is placed. The first tracheostomy tube change usually happens between seven to 14 days after the procedure. Around this time, Many patients can talk and even eat with the tracheostomy tube in place. Trach tube placement is a reversible procedure. When the tube is removed, the stoma, or hole, most commonly closes and heals in days to weeks on its own. Rarely, a secondary procedure is needed to close the stoma. Once you and the care team decide to go ahead with the tracheotomy, the team will talk to you in detail about the risks of the procedure. All procedures have risks, including a tracheotomy. Though rare, risks during the trach procedure include anesthesia risk, injury to the windpipe, nerves, or blood vessels, and difficulty in placing the trach. This can result in airway loss, which could lead to brain injury or even death. More common risks after surgery include the trach falling out, airway loss, bleeding, blockage of the trach tube, scarring, 
wound issues at the trach site, and infection. It is important that you fully understand all of the risks associated with the procedure, so please talk to your care team. Now we will talk about the basics of caring for a tracheostomy. For many patients, the trach is their only airway. Great care must be taken to make sure the tube remains clear, clean, and does not fall out. For this reason, caring for a trach will require training for you and any caretakers before leaving the hospital. At a minimum, a patient will be in the hospital a week after receiving a trach. During this time, the care team will provide you with education so you are prepared for long-term trach care. Your training will begin immediately as you watch the staff care for the trach and give you and your caretakers hands-on practice. The training is complete when you are comfortable with trach care and your supplies are delivered to your home or in some cases, a long-term care facility. Before you leave the hospital, you will learn how to clean your trach tube, suction the tube, change the inner cannula, and troubleshoot any problems. It's often necessary that another responsible adult is home and able to help care for the trach. Some patients and families hire caretakers to help with these duties, others enlist family members. Sometimes, patients do not have the resources to care for their trach at home and must be cared for at a long-term care facility. Your care team and case manager will help you with these important decisions, supplies, and equipment that may be necessary. We know that deciding to have a tracheostomy is a difficult decision. However, for those that need it, a trach is a life-saving procedure that can allow patients to be more comfortable, recover, and thrive.